this is Rakesh. I work here at Microsoft on the engineering team for SQL Server Integration Services, also known as SSIS. Through the use of this video, I'll be showing you how to perform CDC for Oracle databases using the new features introduced in SQL Server Integration Services 2012. In this video, we'll be talking about how you can use the new CDC for Oracle features to capture change data from tables stored on your Oracle database. First, we will talk about how the concept of CDC for Oracle works. Then you will learn about how you can create a CDC service, administer it, as well as monitor the logs or traces so as to troubleshoot the service. So let's answer the essential question as to how the whole thing works. The CDC for Oracle leverages the native CDC functionality that is available in SQL Server. It essentially create, creates the SQL Server mirror tables of the tables located on your source Oracle database. For instance, it creates a mirror table called humanresources.employee from the source table which is called humanresources.employee from your source Oracle database. It then enables SQL Server CDC on those mirror tables. After that, it just syncs the transactions between the source Oracle database to the destination SQL Server database and uses the SQL Server CDC to capture changes from the mirror tables. You can thus consume the changes from the change tables that were created by the SQL Server CDC just as, just as any other change table from the SQL Server database. A CDC service as shown here is basically a window service which runs on one of your systems. This service is responsible for running the entire CDC operation such as querying the source Oracle database for changes, syncing the changes based on transactions to one of your SQL Server data mirror tables which has been enabled for SQL Server CDC. A CDC instance which you will see later will hold information such as what is the source Oracle database and the connection information that you will be using to connect to the source Oracle database? Which tables and columns do I select from the source? Which CDC capture instance or a CDC role that I should be using on the SQL Server CDC on the destination SQL Server? Now let's jump into a demo. In this demo, let's start by creating a service uh, which you will be used using for querying changes from the source Oracle database. For this, we'll start something called change data capture service configuration for Oracle. And this is a MMC which you can use. The first step is to prepare the SQL server on which you would be hosting your mirror tables as well as your metadata database. So I have a SQL server that I am going to prepare right now. When I prepare the SQL Server, it will basically create this database called MSXDBCDC, which contains all the metadata information about all the services that are running, as well as it will create the mirror database and the mirror table. Once that is done, we are now ready to create actual service. So let's say the first service that we create is called Oracle CDC Service 1. I'm going to use my local account to to be used as for running the service. I'm going to connect to the same SQL Server instance I just prepared. And I'm going to create a master password which will be used to create the symmetric key. Once the service is prepared, it is now available for creating instances on. A serv a multiple instance CDC instances can be created on a single Oracle CDC service. Now let's see how we can create an instance. For creating an instance, I go to the other component that is available to me called the Oracle CDC Designer Configuration MMC. When I invoke this MMC, I would be asked about the SQL Server instance which is associated with the C CDC services. So I give the same SQL Server instance that I had prepared in the previous step. 
Now once I connect to this SQL Server, it will show me all the services which are created on this SQL Server. So I select Oracle CDC Service 1. Let's create a new Oracle CDC instance here. When I create the first instance, the first thing it has to do is it has to create this mirror database on the destination SQL Server. So let's create that database. Once the database is created, I need to perf uh, mention which is the connection string for my source Oracle database as well as the username and password. So let's do that. I'll test the connection. So in this step, the wizard asks me that which are the tables for which I want to capture CDC changes. So let's start by adding some tables. In this table selection wizard, you can actually filter all your tables by schemas. So let's say I want to select hr.employees. So I'll select the schema hr. I can do a search and I can see all the tables under the schema hr. Let's say I did, I just wanted to look at only employees table. I can filter all the tables available by the table name pattern and I will get only hr.employees. Let's select that. Now, let's talk about the two other columns that we can see here. The capture instance is a capture instance used to name the instance specific change data capture objects on my SQL Server database. A capture instance is a sysname on your SQL Server and it cannot be null. If it is not specified, the name is derived from the source schema plus the name of the source table in the format as shown here. Similarly, a CDC gating role is the name of the database role that is used to gate access to the change data. A role name is a sysname and must be specified. If explicitly set to null, which is happening here right now, no gating role will be used to limit access to the change data. However, I'm going to use a gating role for my purpose here. After that, if I wanted to uh, select only a couple of columns from this table, I can do so using the edit tab. As you can see, by default, all the columns are selected for CDC. Let's say I do not want to get the calculated columns such as commission percentage or department and manager ID for capturing CDC changes. So I can unselect them here and they would not be in my CDC instance which is used for capturing the changes. Once that is done, now let's go to the next step where we would perform the, arc, the supplemented logging. So using this Oracle supplemented logging script we add supplemental logging to all the tables and the columns that we are going to capture in the CDC instance. Note that the script can be executed even after this wizard has completed and we can as well as it gives you a button for executing it right now. So let's execute it right now. This has failed for me as I have executed the script once before so it is not a problem for me. In the final step of the wizard, I would run all the steps. Basically what the wizard will do is validate the Oracle environment. It will do steps such as verifying that I have the required privileges to query from the source Oracle databases. It will make sure that I enable supplemental logging on all my tables. It will make sure that the Oracle database that I'm connecting to is of required version. And it does this extra check of making sure that the Oracle database has archive log set up. Now let's run this. While it will also prepare the CDC database, which I mentioned in the first step, and it will create the mirror tables on the CDC database, and it will create the drop and create the capture jobs. As you can see, some of these databases were created. Now let's look at the database which was there. So as you can see there are no databases pr present on the SQL Server instance and let me do a refresh. 
and I can see there are two new databases created. One is called MSXDBCDC, the other one being SSIS demo, which I just created. I click next and finish the visit. Now our instance is ready for operation. So we'll right click the uh, operation and we'll say we want to start this instance. When I start this instance, let's look at the status field. The status field talks about the state that the service is in. Basically your service will be in four major states, idle, paused, processing or error. If your stay, uh, service is in idle or processing, it is one of the ideal states. But if it is in st uh, st paused or error, then your service has some troubleshooting to be done. A CDC instance can be an, in an error state if the CDC instance is not running because it could not be in the running state after multiple retries. It can be also in the pause state when the CDC instance is running but the processing is suspended because of an error. The help file for the designer describes more in detail about the statuses. The status message here is also associated, associated with a detailed status message which can describe the error if the CDC instance is an error is in an error or pause state. It also lists the timestamp for the UTC time when the CDC state of the CDC instance was last read from the state table. Now we can see this uh, service is in the processing status. Let's look at the currently processing fields. The last transaction timestamp shown here describes the local timestamp at the SQL server of the last transaction written to the change tables. The last change timestamp describes the local timestamp of most recent change seen by the Oracle CDC instance in the source Oracle database transaction logs. The transaction log head sequence number or the head change number denotes the most recent sequence change number that was read from the Oracle transaction log, while as the log tail change number denotes the sequence change number in which the Oracle CDC instance will reposition to in the event of a restart or another type of failure. The active transactions are the current number of Oracle's transactions that are being processed by the Oracle CDC instance and, and are not yet committed or rolled back. While as the staged transactions denote the current number of source Oracle transactions that are staged to a table called CDC XDB CDC staged transactions table, this is an intermediate table where the transactions are recorded before being actually committed to the destination SQL Server table. The counter section here describes the number of changes being read and written by the CDC instance. The other tabs here will tell you about the Oracle that you are the Oracle source database that you are using, and the tables will tell you which are the tables you are capturing in this capture instance. Now let's look at some of the queries you can query from the MSXDB CDC database. Let's look at all the databases that are there for your MSXDB CDC. As you can see, it records that there is a database called SSIS demo, which is corresponding to this particular service. We can also see what are all the services. You can see the service name, the login that is being used, and which machine is actually uh, hosting the service. There is an interesting table called the trace table. The trace table records all the trace information that the service runs on. While you can also see this trace information in a tab called collect diagnostics. When you click on collect diagnostics, it will save all the diagnostic information from the Oracle environment as well as the XDB CDC trace table which you just saw into a trace file. Let's try to save something to a new trace file. In the meantime, to just have fun with the service, let's insert a new row into the source database and see how it how the service reacts to it. So a new row was created for the service. Let's see how the CDC service reacts to it. 
as you can see it has started reading the number of changes the change here being a single change that was made by us right now and it soon it will commit that to the destination database So finally, let's conclude on what you just learned in the demo video. So you just learned how to set up your CDC features for capturing changes from your Oracle database. You learned how to create a service as well as an instance. You also learned how to operate your CDC instance as well as monitor transactions, collect diagnostics. You also learned how to monitor the MS XDB CDC. Please note that all the functionalities that you are performing on the UI can be performed through a utility called xdbcdcsvc.xc which is in the same folder as your components. For more information look at the help file for the xdbcdcsvc.xc. Thank you for your time and hope you have enjoyed this video.